All right, welcome to Dueling Backhoes. This is, seems like a terrible, I, I piled brush here, and if you don't know me, I will always pile something in the exact wrong spot. But, no matter. Now there's a school next door to me that is uh, having a fun day, so I might get some background noise on that. But here's what I've done. I have picked two very similar maple trees. Now, this one is this one is actually bigger. So I'm trying to, to some degree, this is my 2018 Fully Hydros Plus. I have to come up with a term for that. It's got all the Hydros Plus stuff on it. This tree here, a little smaller, a little shorter, but it will be dug up by our new friend here. Now, I just tested, and this should be a separate video, but I just tested the pressure on this. 1750 maybe 1800 so kind of below spec and that's why i picked the smaller tree for it bigger tree for this one trying to make it a little bit more even not that i think that this one is gonna completely outdig this one i don't know I haven't really dug with either one of these in quite a while but this one does have the b expanded ripper on it and if you've ever used a ripper, I've not used this ripper, uh, but if you've ever used one, they are significantly better at breaking through the roots real close to the, the trunk of the tree, and then you're generally able to push it over. Now, I've got a 12 inch bucket on mine, and the way I dig stumps, and the way I'm gonna dig these stumps, is that uh, I wanna dig it as close to the tree as possible. I don't wanna get, way out here if I don't have to. Now, sometimes you have to. On these trees, we're gonna stay as close as we can, make the smallest hole possible. And I'm just gonna go for, oh, my, my outriggers are leaking down. Can you hear that? You probably can't hear that. But I'm gonna go for what is the fastest I can dig it. Um, same thing here. And when I, when I say dig it, uh, my criteria is gonna be the tree is on the ground and the root ball is out of the hole basically or roughly out of the hole now i'm going to run both of these at 2500 rpms and uh I, and i you'll just have to trust me it's not going to be like oj putting on the glove here i'm going to try to make these uh where i'm doing it as hard uh as i can here i'm going to i'm going to dig as good as i can with the tools I've got here. Uh, I have not run a backhoe like this in quite some time. And honestly, I haven't even run my backhoe uh, recently. I've been, anything that's been dug for the most part has been dug on a uh, excavator for me just because, uh, for, well, this one has actually been a part for some prototyping. So anyhow, let me get set up here and uh, we're gonna start, I'm gonna start with this guy here and just see how fast we can put this tree on the ground. Now, if this goes way too fast, we're gonna to have to pick a different tree, but we'll see. Usually when it comes to digging trees, now these are tall trees, like in a normal scenario, this tree would be half this tall, but we're out in some very dense woods you can see here, and the only way to get any sunlight is to get way up there. And uh, so this guy, this is, a, this is a tree that is, I don't know how old it is, we can look, but it's a good, uh, 20, 30, it's almost 40 foot tall. And the, the diameter at breast height is, uh, I don't know, that, that's probably not six inches uh, quite. So anyway, this one is a little bigger, diameter breast height on this one's at least, I would say an inch bigger, maybe even a little bit more. But anyhow, we'll go ahead and get started and see how this goes. All right. See here, we are with our blocks out here. We're 2,500 RPMs, like I said. I can get this thing. Oh, I don't have a thumb, I forgot. Should have uh, moved that already.
All right, now we can see better. All right, we're gonna start here. You gotta get the feel for this thing, man. That is. So probably. Let's see if we get some two functions at once. Yeah, we can do it. Barely. All right. I should. I guess I'll have a. I can time it on the video. Here we go. Got in here. Did not feel any major roots. Go through again. Oh. Now I realize that even though these trees are relatively so they're relatively the same size, one could be a lot harder to dig. We don't know until we try. You can see here I'm I'm out of gas. That's all she's got. So I gotta come over maybe a little bit further out. See if I can break it. Yep, yep, breaks there. And I should, I'm gonna, maybe my next rule is that there's, and you wouldn't do this normally, but there's no repositioning. And that's mainly because I don't wanna. And these aren't huge trees, and, and this soil, by the way, is, all right, oops. This soil, by the way, is very soft, so like if you, go out there and do this with yours. Come on! Nope, not gonna do it. If you go out there and do this with yours, you may find that it's a little tougher. This is probably the softest soil I have around here. I'll break this. Gotta be a root there. Alright, come on. It's actually doing really good power-wise, I feel like, or sufficient power-wise, but it is slow. Of course, I do have more RPMs, but this is what I'm going to... I'm going to make the assumption here that people like to not run it screaming, but, you know, some people are going to run it screaming. I often I will myself just because I like the All right, so here's something that may end up not being fair but part of the this tree not coming over is that it's getting hung up on another tree now that's going to happen with the other one but that kind of goes to the point of you know this boom cylinder does not have enough really doesn't have enough push that's really all she, I mean it's really not in that case it's really not pushing at all I'll be honest it's the uh, dipper cylinder that is doing the pushing now if I wanted to give hydros plus an advantage I would say there's only repositioning if you can do it with your machine. And like this, like we're not gonna, no way I'm getting this off the ground. But if you were to try to reposition yourself with this setup, you would not be able to do that. Come on. I'm trying to catch a root on the back side but a big part of like if you're doing land clearing like with something like this a big part of being efficient 
is just that, that you can actually do this from one position. Because if you try to, if, if, if you have to reposition on a small tree like this, it'll, and you're clearing a lot of them, then it's gonna kill your efficiency significantly. Now, you've only got one to come out, no big deal. But a lot of people I know that are using the backhoes especially, they're looking at clearing lots of things like this and stumps, if I can pin it, if I can use my... I could drop the uh, thumb, but that's... I'm going to assume you don't have that, even though both these tractors do have it. Maybe we'll do another one that includes the thumb. Cheat here a little bit at least. You're not cheating, you're not trying, is what they tell me. Nope, can't trick it. What I'd like to do, what I would do if I were, I had a little more oomph, is I would, I would push it down to the ground and then I would pick up the root ball. Come on, bite. I'm not an anxious person, but like waiting on this thing is giving me anxiety. Like I'm just, I'm like, Contorting, <laughs> contorting my mouth and leg and anything I can do to try to help this thing move faster. All right, come on. All right, come on, go down. If I can push it down. No, oh, I got too much slop. Yep, I don't see I don't have any power to push at that angle or at that ex level of extension. Oh my. I can only hope to catch it just right. Something here is going to be painful to watch. Well, I would say the Ripper's done a pretty good job of breaking the roots, I think. It's all mostly it has to do with the fact that I can't get uh, behind it. Go, go, go. Come on. Try my best. Oh, there she goes. There she goes. Well, maybe I can. Run out of gas. Okay. I don't know if I'm going to get this one out of the hole without repositioning. So I think I'm going to call this one done. And of course, there are going to be people out there that are going to, well, if you just took two seconds to move, not two seconds, if it took two minutes to move it, you'd already have it out. You're probably right. All right. That is banjo number one. Technically, dueling banjos is between a guitar and a banjo, but... In this case, we're, it's backhoe to backhoe.
All right, we are on the Hydra Plus tractor, and we're at 2,500 RPMs. Get our things out here. Ah, oh, that feels better. So, right away you can tell the difference in the ripper and the bucket. I'm pulling myself towards it. And this is a bigger tree, so we may have bigger roots in here, but we can make kind of quick work of them. And we're able to just kind of Stay in there and break them off. I gotta test them. If I had the ripper on here, I think I would just be able to break through really easily. So I've broken two sets of roots, and what I usually try to do is then I can push it. And I kind of pulled myself too close there. Yep. So it needs a little more braking. And you can probably see this pretty good. But the, just the sheer speed and ability to just get, get the dirt out of the way. Now this has Hydro Plus Boom Plus that is the 2.5 so it, there is a bigger one if you really wanted it but for the most part I don't think this tractor is heavy enough to warrant the bigger one now some people have bought it and I'm sure they like it the the downside you know why not do this is because uh, you're gonna lose oops <laughs> Up, you're gonna lose stuff, some speed. Right. But you see, we can. We're at a disadvantage because my other tree is uh, in the way now. But I think we can still. Break this last root, maybe. But same as before, I can't. I'm not moving myself so I can get behind it. Oh, I'm going to get into my camera. But the big advantage here, and as you can probably see, is we can push with some serious force. We're going to have to... So this, this one, I would argue, would be on the ground. Uh, it is caught up in the trees, but what's really hampering us is, there we go. Yeah, we're still stuck there, but you can see, we can grab this baby, stick him over there. And just, that's the thing you can actually do with this tractor now, is you can you can reach in and pull things out of the ground that you really couldn't do before. So this tree over here, I'll probably pull myself over there. But there's no way you could do that with a stock tractor. I'm gonna try to grab it, pull. Look at that. We just pulled that out from way over there. Of course, I did. I did use the thumb kind of uh, as as a bite. But if you've ever taken out many trees, you know that you know grabbing on them and pulling linearly is pretty tough to do. So, Nita, somebody needs to come up with a deployable thumb, huh? It's coming, I promise. Well, more on that soon. All right, so I'm jumping in here because after kind of going through this, uh, 
I decided that it really wasn't a very fair comparison to have the Ripper. You know, it's really good at cutting roots, and it did a good job of that. But I, I could only push the tree forward, and I couldn't reach behind. Once it got pushed down, I couldn't kind of reach behind it because the Ripper was so narrow. And, um, you know, nine and a half minutes with the Ripper, and I think probably, you know, at least four of that was me trying to push it down. It never really even got on the ground. So it didn't seem like a fair comparison. So what I did is I went and found the bucket off my 270B, which is the same bucket as this, um, connect it to the stock tractor, and I, I set up kind of behind this area. So it's the same soil type, similar tree. It ended up being a little bit smaller, but that's really what I could find in the area. And uh, that's why I'm jumping in here. I want to set that up, and then I'll come in after that and kind of do a voiceover outro because the one that I filmed while I was doing this doesn't make sense anymore. So onto that footage, and then I'll jump in at the end. All right, so the dueling back hose was a little more lopsided even than I expected. So I wanted to make sure that the, and I don't have a lot of experience with the ripper on, on this backhoe. I've run rippers on mini excavators, but not on the backhoe. And obviously with a mini excavator, you're pretty mobile. Uh, so what I wanted to do here is take the uh, bucket. This is a different bucket I have. It came off my 270B. And I found a tree that is not exactly the same. Honestly, this is probably a little smaller than both of those other trees. It's definitely shorter, uh, but it is a maple. And we're, the other ones were over there, and this is the closest tree I could find um, size-wise. So what I'm going to do is use same same specs, right? I want to 2,500 RPMs. This is the stock tractor. I want to see... Um, if the bucket actually made that big a difference versus the ripper. A ripper, of course, is going to break roots, but maybe on a small tree that doesn't matter quite as much, and that's really what I wanted to figure out. So we will get going here. <laughs> Put the bucket down on the front, and unlock my see how she goes. You can see the, the kind of the, the jerkiness of it. Yeah. Break the root. Pull the root for sure. Man, it is. Outriggers down hard enough. Yeah, you really just don't have, with the stock tractor, you just don't have the power. You can find the roots. And that, obviously, with the, you saw the ripper. The ripper would have went right through these. But the, even a bucket as small as this 12 inch bucket makes a huge difference as far as that leading edge surface area that you're breaking. Just traversing from one side of the tree to the next, honestly, that, this is where, you know, say you didn't have any more power that's where the efficiency comes in is like say you pick up a, some dirt like this just moving it over here it's pretty slow and again I realize we got more RPMs to work with we need to but I would say that the bucket on this smaller tree the bucket might be smaller tree in this kind of dirt this dirt is very very soft dirt. So, but if you're trying to cut down an oak tree or something that's got some serious roots or even a maple tree that's like a lot bigger than this. Try to 
like this route. I'm trying to do multiple functions at once, and that's why if it seems like it's creeping, <coughs> it's because we are doing multiple functions at once. But that's so you might think to yourself, well, so you can do it. Well, yes, you can, but shoot, this piece, no real point. You have to, you can't just muscle it down with the, the boom cylinder here, you, but you can combination it with the dipper cylinder. Come on! Come on. I'm pushing myself back, so that's good for strength. Oh, pull myself right back. Come on now. I can get under it. Definitely an advantage of, of the bucket is you can kind of, without repositioning, you can kind of get behind it a bit. Oh, come on. You got it. You got it. Oops. I'm fall on my camera. Oh. It wouldn't be that. There we go. Come on. <laughs> the camera. Uh, hang on. You go over there. Oh, I missed it. Perfect. Come on, I'm almost there. They're almost there. You got it. And we are out of the hole. I would say I would prefer it in this soil, in these soil conditions with small trees, definitely the bucket's going to be better than the ripper. Anything substantially larger, something probably around, I don't know, certainly anything 10 inches at breast height, you, you're probably, and, and assume it's alive, you're probably going to want uh, the ripper. It's definitely going to make a bigger difference. but. All right, well that kind of answers my question. It's still pretty lopsided, and mostly from a speed perspective. For this soil types, uh, the power is a little less important, I and mean, we're able to break those roots even with the stock power. Um, so, you know, but this won't be the last dueling backhoe. I think we got to do another one with something uh, a little bigger and maybe a little tougher soil. All right, to summarize, we've got the stock tractor with a bucket, a little over six minutes. Uh, Hydra's Plus tractor with the bucket's right at four minutes. I think it was just a tick under. So roughly 33% faster uh, in these small trees and these soil conditions. Now, the Ripper, that was like nine and a half minutes. And most of that was me trying to push it down, uh, I think, as I mentioned earlier. But... You know, I think that we're going to have a couple of more tests for the dueling backhoes, and then we'll just go ahead and update this backhoe, and we'll we'll do maybe some of the same stuff once again, maybe in a uh, abbreviated version. But that's it for this one.
questions, comments, leave them below. And thanks for watching.